Welcome to our November 8th worship service for North Coast United Methodist Church. It's a blessing to be able to celebrate with you the love of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in this video presentation. Let's join together in prayer. Precious God, we thank you for your active love. We thank you for the ways that we see your love moving and stirring. Be with us, Lord, as we celebrate the things that your love has done for us so that we can take that love to others. In your Son's precious name I pray. Amen. in this morning's call to worship. Choose to serve the Lord. Gather the children. Choose to serve one another. Gather the elders. Walk humbly with your God. Let's have the kids come forward for children's time. I miss talking to you about this last week, and, and I realize this is after the fact, but I still want to talk to you about it. Last week was Halloween. And I, I have to tell you, one of the things that I love about Halloween is, is when we put on a costume and we get to pretend to be something else for a moment, we, we get to celebrate something that we like because, and we get to pretend to be that. And I just love so much about Halloween and, and I, I don't get to talk about this because it hasn't happened yet, but at our November 1st Kids Club gathering, all of you guys had a chance to, to show me your costumes and had a chance to, to share with me why that you picked those costumes to wear. And, and I share with you in the moment, I'm looking forward to hearing those stories. And without a doubt, I know that when I hear those stories, I am going to hear something exciting and something very joyful about why you love something in your life. 
So I'm very excited to be able to hear those. And even in that excitement right now, I know that when we pick our, our Halloween costumes, as we pick the things that we pretend to be in very specific moments, we are celebrating something that's very important to us. Now, I want to share with you a word. It's the definition of the word Christian. We in North Coast United Methodist Church, we, we are a church that celebrates Jesus Christ. We're Christians. And the definition of Christian means to be Christ-like. I want us to think about what that means, to be Christ-like. It means to, to be Christ's hands and feet for other people. We can't be christ but we can be Christ-like to other people and share an image of that passion and love with other people. Now, some of you may have been Minecraft char characters for Halloween, and it doesn't make you a Minecraft char character, but you, you get to share that image with someone else. For me, I like to dress up like the Lone Ranger, and the Lone Ranger is my, my favorite hero. And when I dress up like the Lone Ranger, I don't become John Reed. I don't become the Lone Ranger, but I get to show other people what I think that the Lone Ranger would live like. And I get to act in that way. When we live to be Christ-like, Christians, Christ-like, we don't become Christ, but we get this opportunity to pretend to, to be Christ-like, to go out and not just pretend, but to really live and to be the hands and feet and to show people what we think Christ would do. When we wear our Halloween costumes, we pretend like uh, we, we show people what we think our superhero would do, what our video game character would do, what our storybook character would do. We show them what we think they would do. And when as we live Christ-like lives, we show other people what we think Jesus Christ would do. I want us to hold on to that idea as we celebrate God's reality in our lives. And, and let's go out and let's show people what we think Jesus Christ would do. Let's join together in prayer. Precious God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for being real in our lives. Precious name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope you're all doing well. Join us as we pass the peace to each other. of prayer. We come, Holy Spirit, excited to serve with you and to walk the path you have set before us. We choose to serve you and encourage our neighbors to join us, that your kingdom of love may grow and flourish on this earth. Amen. Please now join together in the prayer as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Thanks be to God for the inspiration of this word. Please join together in the prayer of assurance. We are servants to a God who celebrates his children. We are servants to a God who loves the little ones. In Christ's grace, we are all God's children celebrated and loved by God. Let's join together in prayer. Precious God, we thank you for being on this journey with us. Precious God, we thank you for the ways that you step in and make things possible, even in the moments that we have deep fears and deep worries. Precious God, we thank you that you know all, see all, And even though that we find ourselves in worrisome moments, we have the reality, and if we can just find the trust, we know that you see the beginning, the middle, and the end, and you know the complete story. You bless us by allowing us to be on the journey of this story, not missing any chapter of our life, but being able to move through this story and to be blessed through the process, to grow through the process, and to see the potential that only you can create today, God, as we go through this sermon, we ask that you speak. Nothing happens unless it's sparked by you, Lord. Amen. It's a blessing today. 
to share this sermon with you. I'm not going to reveal all of the strings and the mysteries behind uh, when I'm doing this work, but I will share with you, at this moment, I am well aware that this sermon will be shared with you on the weekend of November the 7th and November the 8th. I am not recording this sermon even that week. I don't know the things that will happen between the moment that I'm recording this sermon and the moment that it's shared with you throughout the world on November the 7th and November the 8th. There are so many things that I know right now in this moment that will happen, that will take place, that will affect our lives as world citizens and very directly affect our lives as citizens of the United States of America. There is so much that will happen between now that I record this and the moment that you watch this in your homes that will might turn some of our lives upside down. Or it may, in our opinions, pave a road that will make lives easier to go through. No matter what happens between now and November the 8th, it's a journey for us to be on. And it's a journey that is in the control of God's hands. I want us to hold that reality. And I want us to hold on to the fact that I, you know, I'll, I'll tip my hand for a little bit. Today is October 27th. Today is October 28th, excuse me. And I'm not even going to edit that out. Today is October 28th that I record this. So there is so much that's going to happen in our lives between October the 28th and November the 8th. And I share with you, there's so much that we hold in deep anticipation, and there's so much that we hold in worry, but the reality is, no matter what happens on November the 3rd, which is the election time here in the United States, and I, I want everybody that's watching us to realize, I, I have learned that we have dear friends not in this country that have the ability to see these videos. So I, I kind of add that preface here in the United States. Here in the United States, November the 3rd is our presidential election. And for many of us right now, standing in the moment of October 28th, we are standing in moments of fearful anticipation on what the outcome of that election will be. We stand in moments and hoping for some of us that things stay the way that they are and for some of us that we find a moment of change that will shift things in a new direction and create new opportunities. But I'll share with you, between October 28th and November the 8th, no matter what happens on November the 3rd, the one thing that remains true and remains the same is that our Lord and God will always be in control, no matter who receives political power. I want us to look at this scripture today. Crystal is reading for us, read for us, Psalm 34. And this psalm, is, it's a psalm of hope. And I've shared with you so many times the different psalms. It's the psalms of peace the Psalms of Lament, and Psalms of the Kingdom Nature. So this is, I, I would say it would be a Psalm of Peace, it's a, a Psalm of Hope, but there's so much that's laced through this. This Psalm almost holds dual identities. It could be a Psalm of Peace, depending on the nature of the person that's reading it. It could be a Psalm of Lament, depending on the nature of the individual who's reading it. And today as we look at this, I want to tear those two identities apart and, and pull them through our conversation. Because I want you to know that I'm using the narrative of October 28th to November 8th. But the reality is, from the moment that we're born until the moment that we return to the presence of God, God is always in control. God is aware of our narrative. And we have a place in free will that we even at times construct our narrative. 
but our narrative becomes our identity. It becomes the way that we interact with the world. And there are places where the narrative that we construct and the narrative that God foresees in our lives mesh together that we can reach the potential of our lives. So let's look at that. Let's look at this Psalm 34. And I want us to see, if, if you only see one thing from this, I want you to see that God is traveling with us. Let's look at the first five verses of Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and delivered me from all of my fears. Look to Him, and be radiant. So your faces shall never be ashamed. In this section of this psalm, this is very much a psalm of praise. A psalm shouting out where that we need to look towards and be focused on and to remain focused on as the narrative of our living and the narrative of the full spectrum of God's knowledge interact with each other. There's a beautiful story that I've heard and I've seen it told in many different places. The place where it stood out to me the most was watching a sitcom that I enjoy watching called The Middle. How about a few words from the groom? Uh, thanks. Now the groom's father? No, ditto. And finally, the groom's brother and best man, Mike. Same here. You know, uh, I do actually have something to say. Um, growing up as uh, Rusty's big brother, uh, I was always having to teach him things that I learned before him. How to tie a fish and fly, how to slide belly first into the home plate. Anyway, the other day, when he said that he was now going to be part of a family, I figured, well, maybe there's a thing or two I could tell him about that. Because, see, Rusty, family isn't easy. Kids think they don't get to do what they want, but the truth is parents don't get to do what they want either. Parents got to drive kids around and help them with their homework after a long day of work. Think we like doing that? But that's family. A bunch of people not doing what they want. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. See, you're going to piss each other off. You're going to say horrible things. You're going to make each other cry because there's no one in the world that'll make you more miserable than your family will. I'm getting there. See, I don't even get to give the toast I want. <laughs> My point is, we're all going to die. And we're all going to have a gravestone with a dash on it. 1942-2016. 1963-2038. And that dash represents your life. And the thing I know for sure is cause of these four people right here, my family, <clears throat> is that that dash will have meant something. And Rusty, I wish that for you too. That's it. I was getting there. In the middle is, is the story of this family that lives in the, the, the middle uh, uh, culture of the United States. And, and it's about the working class lifestyle of this family. And the father of this family stands up at a wedding, his brother's wedding. And he begins to share the story about what life really is. And he shares the story, actually, of a tombstone. 
And if you've ever watched this show and, and you've seen Mike, Mike Heck is his name, and Mike talks about things, you, you, would, you would understand why that Mike Heck would use the narrative of living and start out by looking at a tombstone. He's, he's one of those characters that, that works extra hard at life and, and deals with living in such a way that maybe sometimes the, the rest at the end is, might be a little bit desirable. But he, he talks about this tombstone, and he talks about the birth date, and he talks about the date that an individual passes away. And he says, for many people, when they look at this tombstone, we become aware of the birth date, and we become aware of the date that the individual passes away. But that is not the most important part of a tombstone. The name of the individual isn't even the most important part of the tombstone. The lovely inscription that the family picks as a, as a phrase for other people to read isn't the most important part of that tombstone. What Mike Hex shares in this speech is the dash. The dash between the birth date and the day that the individual passes away is the most important part. The dash. Because the dash represents so many different things. The dash represents first steps. The dash represents the first day of school. The dash represents the first time that an individual leaves home to try to build a life for themselves. The dash represents following love with someone. The dash represents that first time that that love created a family. And whether it be by the birth of a child or the adoption of adding a new child into their lives, it celebrates the way that love grows and, and shares. The dash represents skin knees. The dash represents times of heartache and, and worry and fears. The dash represents times that we have unfortunately had to experience someone else's dash ending. The dash stands for the narrative in which that we are living in our lives. And if we are able to celebrate the dash more than worrying about the ending, there is so much potential. I want us to look at this scripture because I want to share with you the ways that we even look at our faith. This first five verses talks about being focused on the Lord. And being focused on the Lord so much that we exalt God's name in any way possible. That we lift God's name in praise within the moments of our dash. And the ways that we, without even saying God's name, proclaim to the world that God is real. I want us to think about that. Because there's different ways that we look at our faith. And in the, depending on the way that we look at our faith, it also depends on how we look at this scripture, this psalm, as either a psalm of praise or a psalm of lament. If we realize that our faith is not based on the ending, if we realize that our faith is not based on what happens when that we return to God's presence and we realize our faith is based on that dash, it gives us so much more motivation and we begin to live what the Lord prayer shares. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. I'll share with you, I have a very special connection with what I'm trying to share with you right now because it is the difference between how I celebrated my personal faith at the beginning of my faith journey as a high school student learning about the blessings of salvation and now as the head pastor of North Coast United Methodist Church teaching individuals how to make faith a part of their narrative. What I want to share with you is this reality. Our faith is not based on what happens after we pass away. Our faith is based on the dash. As a young child, I needed the insurance of heaven. 
and needed the insurance of salvation. And when I uttered the words of John 3.16, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, my faith was banked on what happens after the date I pass away. And not so much what it means to live with that faith in the moment of the dash. What makes these first five verses so much a part of a praise, a, a, a psalm of praise, is the reality that if we can find the way to look for the shining light of God's grace, even in the moments of heartache, skinned knees, broken hearts, other narratives hitting that final date, the times that life shifts in the way that we don't want it to shift, if we can find a way to continue to look at the presence of the narrative of God's overall understanding knowledge, we can find the hope to hold on to, to grasp on to, and to continue on trying and persevering and getting to places that we need to be. I want us to think about that as we move into the next five verses. Because the next five verses, when we remember that God's narrative and our narrative blending together, which within that dash of living is the hope that helps us persevere through all things, then this next script, part of the scripture does not allow the psalm to shift into a psalm of lament, but it actually becomes a part of a story of hope that makes God's reality so bright and so real that we remember even when we pour out our hearts crying, God doesn't stop helping us. Let's listen to this. And there's two ways to hear this. You can hear the differences. There's a psalm of lament that will bring some heartache out of this. And if we look at this through the Psalms of praise, there is a way that we see that even though God is there. 6 through 10. The poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in Him. Oh, fear the Lord, you His holy ones, for those who fear Him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Each verse, 6 through 10, has a bad and a good. Each verse, 6 through 10, has a worry and a praise. And depending on where we are at in the dash of our narrative affects the heart that we pull out of that. We either focus on the poor and crying souls that we embattle within ourselves, or we realize that God is the one that saves from every trouble. We are either the poor that are crying or we're the poor that are crying that know to look to God. We are either the ones who are feared and need deliverance or we are the ones that realize that the Lord sends the angels around us and encamps us in hope. We are either the ones who are seeking refuge or we are the ones that see that God sets a place at the table for us. We are either the ones who are hunger or we are the ones that remember that God sets a table beside still waters. It really does bank on where we see the reality of God within our narrative. Do we realize that God is real within the dash or are we only banking on what happens after that final date? Again, my original path where my faith foundation began to form was so direly focused on what it means to achieve this place in the kingdom of heaven that I forgot that in the prayer that the Lord taught us, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. 
There were so many times in my faith life that I heard this phrase uttered in prayers from the congregation, Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. If I hear that phrase in these verses from 6 through 10, there's two things I hear. I hear the ones that are focused on the crying soul, the ones that are focused in the fear, the ones that are focused seeking refuge, and the ones who are hungering in the moment. And the only place that they see the, the restoration of that is by going to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But the more I've thought about it through life, it's not the calling of Jesus Christ to come back to take us back home, but it's the reality of, oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus, and help us make a place here on earth that anyone can find the source of food for their hunger, the housing for the refuge that they seek, and the place of peace and comfort when that they are the crying souls. When we look at the narrative of the dash, it's the reality that we're not looking for the reward, but how we make the reward much more sweeter by adding others to the kingdom and showing others that they have a place at the table of grace. I want us to think about that. Because there are so many dear friends who are hurting around us. There are so many dear friends whose dash has been negatively affected in such a way that they don't see that there can be an on earth as there is in heaven. There are so many hurting dear souls that are seeking food that are seeking a place of refuge. They are seeking places of restoration. They are seeking the acknowledgement that there is a place for them at the table of Jesus Christ. We have so many dear souls that are seeking these places. And we need to be the ones that take the narrative of our dash and not just intertwine that narrative of the dash of the reality of God's narrative, but take both of those narratives of these dear hurting souls so that they can see there is hope in faith. When those narratives entwine and open doors. And then I want you to hear this. It's the last scripture. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord, which you des- which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and His ears open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are uh, the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from all. He keeps all of their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of His servants. None of those who take refuge in Him will be condemned. Here's this whole deal. When we combine our narrative, our dash, with God's narrative, when we take our narrative and God's narrative and take it to the world to show other people that there's hope, hope starts to grow. Hope starts to spark peace and hope begins to prepare hearts for the reality that there is a place at the table for everyone. All we have to do is share that little spark of hope And it can burn a fire that brings redemption to not just another person, but every person that person's narrative interacts with. Here is the reality. When we're able to look at this psalm as a complete psalm of of joy, 
a psalm of redemption. When we realize that, yes, there's times in our narrative that lament takes place, but we can continue to look for the joy and hope in God's love, we can begin to be the ones that opens the door so that any and every person can find their place at the table. Right now, on October 28th, I can choose to worry and be fearful about November the 3rd and be, choose to be worried and fearful about what world exists when you see this sermon on November 7th or 8th. Or I can just sit and trust and focus on the Lord my God. I can do my part by participating on November the 3rd and being the hands and feet and letting the narrative of my dash participate in the story of what happens on November the 3rd and also continue to focus on God and realize that whether the person I voted for takes office or not, the only person that has true power is God. And then... No matter what happens November the 3rd, whether my guy wins or my guy loses, I still have a responsibility to participate in the narrative of God's reality. I have the responsibility to go out and continue to be the image of hope in the world because whether my guy wins or my guy loses, I do not get to stop being an image of God's hope to the greater world. As you watch this on November 8th, I got no idea what's going to happen November 3rd or 4th or 5th, however long it takes to decide. But I'll share with you the greatest stories of God's love are the ones where people have fought and used their narrative to show a story of redemption and even in the worst moments of the narrative, have found ways to stay focused on God and to pull through and to celebrate a redemption that only exists in God. Please hold on to that. I hope this sermon on November the 8th finds you in a place of peace. And even if it doesn't, I pray that we work together to be the image of God's peace, sharing our dash narratives with the world, so that we continue to be the hope that the world needs to see. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. As we've moved into our time of offering, we'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us. Okay.
Please join with me in the closing benediction, prepared and preparing. We celebrate God with us now and yet to come. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.